assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you and uh, uh, it is a great pleasure for me and uh, i'm also thankful and show my uh, want to show my gratitude to the organizing committee of the bangladesh heart rhythm society to uh, select my case as a cha challenging case today i'm going to present a case uh, who has undergone a surgery of congenital heart surgery we know that after or during the surgery, there are lots of events happen in the uh, OR, um, operative theater, operation theater and the ICU and the ICU. And there are lots of events happen like uh, hemodynamic changes, scar inflammation and electrolyte changes, which precipitate the arrhythmia. Today, I'm going to show a case who presented at the age of the two year, 11th month, who is a male child weighing 10 kg, diagnosed as a case of tetralogy of fellow, who admitted under us for corrective surgery, which is done on 20 April in 2021 of this year. And surgeon has done VSD closure with right, bund uh, right bundle muscle band resection with monocast bulb reconstruction of pulmonary bulb with transannular patch augmentation and they kept a patent for an ovary. And the uh, uh, cross clamp time and cardiopulmonary bypass time is all right for the child. And this is the preoperative ECG. This is 12 lead standard ECG where it is rate is around 100 and rhythm is regular and sinus. And if uh, the P is tall and axis is right axis, and uh, there is RV hypertrophy, so it is suggestive of a te uh, tetralogy of fellow. And we do on table extubation and we shifted to the ICU with dexmedotomidin. And patient was hemodynamically stable. And as a routine of post operative case, we do an echo, which shows there is no residual VST flow, there is no residual RVOT obstruction, and there is free flow pulmonary regurgitation with that kept PFO, there is bidirectional shunt, and there is good biventricular systolic function, and there is no pericardial effusion. And we kept this patient and shifted in the step down as uh, because there was a chest drain tube in the right side, but intermittently there are some arrhythmia is seen uh, which persisted uh, for a short while. And it is the uh, 11th post-operative day. Uh, it is the ECG of uh, 12 lead, half uh, standardized. And if we see uh, here, the heart rate is 130 to 40 around, and it is normal and acceptable for the child. And if we see there is a regular, uh, irregularly irregular uh, rhythm, and if we see the P wave here in lead two, the P morphology is uh, same here, but after the pause, the long pause, if we see the P morphology, it's changed. There is inverted, there is uh, rounded, and there is tinted P wave. So the P morphology is changing here. And if we see the lead three, there is a flutter like wave, not typically sawtooth, but it may be artifact, maybe flutter wave. And if we see the V3, the PR interval, it is not a constant way. It is prolonging some way. And there is bundle branch block, which match with the case of post tetralogy of fellow. This is a fascinating ECG, which happened in 12 post of day. The rate is remarkably increased with a white uh, mon monophasic morphology uh, with uh, the, the variable heart rate, it uh, is around 300 somewhere, somewhere 250 rate. And uh, the P is inconspicuous here. P is not, and there is RBB pattern also seen. So there are some thing we have not struck on a single point diagnosis. We thought in differential way. First of all, we think that it might be a case of atrial fibrillation because there is the irregularly irregular heart rate is present. And secondly, we thought that it may be multifocal atrial tachycardia because we found the variable morphology of the P and the axis is different. And uh, it might be a case of atrial flutter with variable block. 
and less likely we thought junctional ectopic tachycardia because it is almost 12 post-op day. It is usually present in early post-operative day. And uh, ventricular tachycardia is less likely because it is monophasic, irregularly irregular heart rate, which is not matched with the ventricular tachycardia. So what is the next step should we do? Should we do adenosine IV push, IV beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, which is less likely used in a small children, or we cardiovert the patient or give the IV amiodarone or IV propionamide. Our patient was stable, ventricular function is good, and electrolyte is normal. We exclude these things. So we thought we give IV adenosine, adenosine which uh, uh, may be di uh, which act as both diagnostic and therapeutic. If there is microentry, the adenosine can block the AV node and they, they may be revert. Or if there is atrial fibrillation or flutter or other atrial activity foci, then the AV nodal delay, the ventricular rate will be delay and atrial morphology will be more delineated. So we give adenosine 100, 100 microgram per kg and we have given three times, but unfortunately, there is no change of the morphology. It is uh, still irregularly irregular with white complex tachycardia. So next of this, we thought that we uh, tried with uh, IV amiodarone. We have given five uh, milligram per kg over four hours, and then maintenance five microgram per kg per minute. Uh, and we maintain over 24 hour IV and then overlap with oral dose. Uh, that is uh, five milligram per kg, 12 hourly. And if we uh, see now that there is rate is a little bit decreased, but there is couplet, there is somewhere there is a higher rate and somewhere it is the rate is decreased and there is a pause. And if we see somewhere the pacing, uh, the patient was uh, pacing where the surgeon has put atrial and ventricular pacing where in the OT table and uh, patient was uh, the uh, actual pacing where was there. And some uh, we are found that pacing where is taking action. And if we see the rate is chaotic in lead three and ABL. And if we find that somewhere P is sinus is coming, some uh, there is flat and some P morphology, yeah, somewhere there is junctional, there is inverted. So it also uh, uh, that uh, atrial activity is multiple type. And this is the 13th post-op day. Now the patient is uh, all through stable hemodynamically. And if we see the rhythm is now more stable, but the morphology is... Uh, like uh, before also here some P is coming, but not uh, well delineated here also. And this is the 16th post-op day where, where the patient is still getting the amiodarone. And uh, if we see the P is coming and somewhere P is uh, um, pacing where is uh, acting on and uh, somewhere P is chaotic and the RVB uh, morphology is also seen in uh, uh, AVL lead three, uh, sorry, in uh, atrial flutter where you're seen in lead three, AVL and atria, uh, AVA. So now uh, we are thinking, what should we do now? Should we stop the amiodarone or should we start a different IV antiarrhythmic or we should cardiovert the patient? Catheter ablation in these uh, small children is less likely and this post-operative case is less likely. Should we pace the patient or should we cool the patient? So what uh, we have done, we uh, cardio, we tried to cardiovert the patient, but uh, there is also unfortunately the rhythm still now um, irregularly irregular, and heart rate is now around uh, hundred, uh, around hundred, and somewhere P is coming, but P is uh, axis is not. Uh, uh, normal and morphology is also not normal and uh, there is RBB pattern is seen. So what we have done uh, as because patient was uh, uh, hemodynamically well, we stopped the amiodarone. We started oral propanolol, one milligram per kg per day in three divided dose. And uh, with the counseling with the pa patients uh, to come after seven days, we discharge the pa patient and uh, this is the uh, seventh day after. What we have uh, found that the rate is now uh, 100 and rhythm is uh, regular, but uh, uh, in lead one, it is 
sinus rhythm, but in lead two, the P morphology is different. And in lead three, AVF, there is low atrial focus. So again, we are uh, advised to come after 15 days. And now we found that the rhythm is regular and it is discharging the P is coming from the sinus. All sinus is coming. So in conclusion, I want to tell that in a post-operative case where lots of hemodynamic changes, scar inflammation happens, we should not st uh, strike on a single diagnosis. We should emphasis give on the different arrhythmic activity that is happening to the patients. So in a conclusion, we can tell that actual arrhythmia are common in a children in post-operative congenital heart disease repair. And risk factors are younger age, lower weight, and type of surgery is very important. And the intraoperative factor that cardiopulmonary bypass time, cross clamp time, this is very important. And the post-operative hemodynamics to maintain the ventricular function, electrolyte, all these things is very important in a post-operative case for prevent arrhythmia. So thank you all for being with me. Thank you, Madam, for your brilliant presentation. Now the floor is open for the question. Uh, one thing I have to mention for the audience, if uh, they have any question, they can put their, uh, please put your question in the chat box so that we can uh, ask the presenter. Any panelist has any question, please? So, Rofik sir, uh, we want to have any comments about this. Oh, yes, Anissa sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Naruma, it's a very good case, especially in the post operative period, uh, especially after cardiac surgery. We have seen uh, the different sorts of arrhythmia. It's a very nice case for discussion in this, uh, 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 in this uh, session also. I think it's a uh, uh, clean cut, seems to me, the actual fibrillation, especially most common arrhythmia in the post operative period. And most of the time, you see the irregularly irregular rhythm. And management is maybe so different. Uh, is that just to me? But it's a clean cut case of atrial fibrillation, but you have to manage the case very nicely, very meticulously. That's the important issue there. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you, sir. One sir. thing I want to mention uh, in, in case of post operative period, while pericardiotomy is done, atrial fibrillation is very common. So, uh, if the patient, so is, may not, I, if the may patient is not symptomatic and uh, is uh, not uh, causing any hemodynamic derangement, uh, we should look for the underlying cause if there is any metabolic derangement or <clears throat> electrolyte imbalance like that. If corrected, not uh, abated from this arrhythmia, then uh, we, should, we, we should uh, wait. Just I have uh, one uh, also, Please, please. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Naruma. That is a nice case. Uh, I think uh, we discussed the case. Uh, you see, after giving adenosine, before adenosine heart rate was around 200, but after giving adenosine heart rate suddenly jumped nearly 300, I think. If, if you just go back to that ECG after giving adenosine. So, when after giving Um, uh, after you seen her, this is it. So this, this is this is very rapid. Rate. Means uh, nearly three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Naruma, can you show that is this? Is Naruma. This is the, the before, before adenosine, sir. Uh, here somewhere heart rate is around three hundundred and somewhere two fifty. This is twelve period. Before adenosine. Before adenosine. This was before adenosine. Yes, it is before adenosine. After seeing this ECG, we have given the uh, ECG. So, and what is the after adenosine? This is after adenosine. After adenosine. As a before adenosine, Naruma. Yes, sir. Here, uh, the ECG is very irregular. Naruma, what is it? What what was your diagnosis? This is easy. You did the applied the, the, the diagnosis. This is easy. With uh, I thought this is a case of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation.
at your sorry TV sorry show. interrupted yeah again please naru again please tell tell your actual fibrillation with pre existing rbb so why did you apply adenosine sir uh, uh, we have also some uh, differential diagnosis sir so uh, patient was hemodynamically stable so we thought we firstly check the ventricular function electrolyte uh, any metabolic derangement any infection is there we exclude that, that thing sir and then we given adenosine for diagnostic and therapeutic purpose also sir because uh, it might be i, I told that post operative there is scar and uh, foci can come from different so we put some differential diagnosis also to exclude that for uh, uh, ab nodal delay to reduce the ventricular rate atrial morphology will be more obvious more conspicuous so for diagnostic purpose also sir i have given the adenosine Uh, and if also, there is micro entry so i have given uh, if there is revert back with adenosine we will take final comment from rohit sir but before that dr ashok who is who is one was the better choice adenosine versus amiodarone in this case uh, as it is uh, looks like atrial fibrillation adenosine will not be effective anyway but Uh, sometimes uh, i think naruma gave adenosine for diagnostic purpose only but amiodarone is a better choice here number 1 number 2 after uh, after sir actually all the ecgs each of the ecgs are different from others so uh, one by one if we see just go through one by one ecg before this is shock after this is shock i thought there is some onk wax then multifocal atrial tachycardia finally it uh comes down to sinus rhythm i think this one if you see this this one is cg this is after amiodarone bolus yes sir this is atrial fibrillation yeah rofik sir yeah i just brief comment i think this is cg the thing that looks like p wave i don't think they are p wave it's just it's fibrillation underlying um so the who gave the adenosine Uh, sir, our, our <laughs> okay. No, I, I'm not. I'm not questioning the choice. I'm questioning who injected it. Sir, our medical officer. Miss, whether whether the sister, okay. how whether it was given bolus or it it was given slowly. That was the no. uh, question from Ropik sir. Yes. So the issue yes. is. Two issues. Was it a central line or peripheral line? No, Number sir, one. It, yes. was, it was peripheral line. Uh, it is Secondly. still post-operative day. C- central line was not there. Okay. And second, the person who injected it has he ever done it before? That Because is the problem. Important. Okay. The problem is adenosine half-life. It is. I think it's a very good diagnostic tool. The fact that the rate didn't change at all. That means the person took more than nine seconds to inject it. Yes, because yes. adenosine half life is nine seconds. So if we yes. have, I think that is a good tool to look at the underlying reasons. So what I would have done, I would take a very experienced person to give the adenosine. A simple job should be done by the most experienced person, like closing the skin, should be done by the best surgeon because that's the beauty of the surgery. Same here. So um, bolus adenosine, quick injection followed by quick flush should have shown slowing, and I think at this point with this kind of heart rate even in a child probably what I would have done I would have attempted cardioversion cardioversion first start which which if need be with a bolus of amiodarone to maintain the sinus rhythm at this time and uh, that probably would have been a reasonable thing because the cardioversion actually was attempted later on uh, sir uh, yes, we sir. also thought sir cardioversion uh, as uh, it was uh, the rate is around 250 it was uh, at uh, um, early morning sir at uh, 6 am sir so uh, they have uh, done the adenosine and uh, in the morning when we came we started with uh, ip amiodarone sir then when we found that the rate is a little bit stable okay. and uh, patient is stable so uh, uh, we take this decision but we also thought that cardioversion sir thank you yes naruma you just only thought that as because patient is stable hemodynamic stable. that's why you didn't have a, give the cardioversion yeah and yes yeah. sir That's the main clue. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. We, we can you. go to the next case, na? Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Oh. Very nice case, Banarwa. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you for sir. presenting the case. Beautiful, easy case, Banarwa. Yes. 